You're listening to the Bearded Theologians podcast, hosted by Zach Bechtold and Matt Franks. If you'd like to learn more about the Bearded Theologians, you can go online at beardedtheologians.com, where we have past podcasts, blogs, and a couple items for sale. So check us out, beardedtheologians.com. Thank you for listening, and enjoy this week's show. So you're listening to the Bearded Theologians podcast, hosted by Matt Franks. And Zach Beck told. So this week on the podcast, um, we were kicking around a lot of ideas. And I mean, literally like kicking around a lot of ideas this week to figure out what to do. And I looked behind Zach and I noticed he was missing a few items. And I've come to realize that um, we really haven't talked about um, what it means to be a United Methodist pastor in transition in the midst of um, this COVID pandemic that we're in. And I think Zach can provide a really good um, experience on that as he is transitioning from Um, his appointment in Montana to a new appointment in Wyoming. And so Zach, as you, um, as we talk about this day, you know, what are some things that pop up for you and things you've experienced and, you know, how things are different right now uh, Mm -hmm. transitioning in the midst of, of this COVID pandemic? Yeah, for sure. Um, You know, if you've listened to this podcast long enough, uh, you know, moving for for either one of us is not a new thing. Uh, We have done it a lot. And uh, I think we've done it. I've done it twice. This will be my third move since we started the podcast. Yep. Uh, Maybe it's the podcast. Uh... (laughs) (laughs) No, but really, this is a different move than uh, anyone that we've done before. Um, It's, it's, it's different. I, we found out a month ago, right out a month ago that we were moving. And before that leading up to it, I thought, man, it's moving season or it's appointment season. Uh, I feel, I feel bad for all of our pastors who are having to try to figure out how to move in the, in the season of COVID uh, in our churches. How do they transition as well? How do they grieve the pastors that are moving on and how do they celebrate the pastors that are coming uh, when we can't gather together? I thought, man, I'm so glad I don't have to deal with that. I probably shouldn't have said that out loud because now I'm moving. Um, And that's how funny God is. Uh, (laughs) But it it is different. And and I think the thing that I have noticed the most this year is I've, I've not, I've not had time to grieve uh, to, to be honest, just because it's been so quick, but I'm not seeing people because we're not in church on Sundays and I see folks out in the community and and at the grocery store and and just the places where you see people but it's different um I'm not we we always have that last sermon that last time we know we're going to see folks uh at least for a while if not ever and we don't have that this year we don't have that doesn't feel like we're getting that closure in the same in the same way and it, as well as we communicate in the church there's there's always um uh, unfortunately there's always someone that gets missed right uh whether it's in the church or the community and it's come time to come back to church um there might be someone that missed the news right <laughs> It shows up and they're like, who's this person, you know? Um, So it's really, really strange. Um, And for me, it's really, really important for me to encourage my churches, um, especially the new ones I go to. Hey, grief the pastor that that left. Um, Please, please do that. And if you're in the area and you can go and stop and see them, go and stop and see them. You're not going to hurt my feelings. But in the same right, to say that to my current church of, hey, we've had great times together. I love you. Um, I don't get to be your pastor anymore, but we get to transition into a different kind of relationship, um, a friendship, you know, and not to be able to say that out loud to them and hug them and have that kind of closure has been really difficult. Uh, And it's probably not help my compartmentalization of feelings and grief. <laughs> well, especially uh, the Instagram type that you are. Yeah. Um, uh, and so as you know, um, I've been able to see, uh, you know, Oklahoma's in that, we're in that, Oklahoma's been doing, since we've changed our time, we're, it, nobody seems to know when to move. And so it's been interesting to see how different churches are doing it. And, um, you know, I've enjoyed the drive-by pastor once. Mm-hmm. Um, although my fear would be if I were to do that, 
someone would hit me with a water balloon or an egg just because <laughs> I just, that's just how I feel. Um, and I, you know, I think about those things. Um, what are some things your congregation has done for you? Um, and, you know, I mean, like you said, it's only been about four weeks, but yet, mm -hmm. like, you know, how have they responded to, you know, to how they want yeah. to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, we've gotten a lot of cards, uh, or we've gotten a handful of cards, but we're having a uh, kind of a drive-by thing in, in our yard on Saturday. Um, it's it's a, a mixture of all of it, whatever people's comfort level is. If they want to just drive by, honk and wave and, and say goodbye that way, we, we would love for them to do that. If they want to stop and stay in their car and, and talk from the curb, we can do that. And uh, we're going to have, you know, bring a chair, come sit in the yard and, and chat with us for a while. We're going to be out here just hanging out. And, and so it's just come, come with your comfort level, uh, come and be respectful for the people around you and just come and say goodbye. Come and, come and see us. Um, we've been doing a round of uh, drive through communion this month to, to kind of do the same thing. One, to, to ease our way back into possible in-person gatherings, but also just to get to see people uh, and, and serve and uh, celebrate communion with them one, one more time. And so it's been different, but it's been fun. We've been outside uh, on our church steps, and it's been gorgeous uh, to do a simple communion service with birds chirping and the sun shining, and just there's, there's something to that, I think. Um, and so those are some of the, some of the ways, um, you know, and, and you never know, uh, this church always surprises us with something, uh, uh, you know, just because they're that, 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 those kind of people, you know, they, they've got tricks up their sleeves. So, yeah. So what is your, um, income, the church you're, uh, coming into, how are some things they've responded, um, to you? Cause I know like that's, that's even different too. Like, like, you know, before you would have those meetings of, of getting to know them and, and like you'd have some time where you would actually get to spend mm -hmm. um, with leadership and things like that. And, and mm -hmm. now granted, like this is a little bit different. You're, you have four weeks of that kind of deal. So it's a little bit expedited, but yet even in the midst of COVID, like not being able to do some of those things, mm -hmm. um, how are some ways you guys have handled that? Yeah. Cause normally you'd, you'd be able to go down and, and, uh, even just have a small gathering with a either leadership or just a handful of folks. Um, and so that's been different. Uh, we, we went down last week to close on our house, but we really didn't get to see anybody. And uh, we, we quietly went into town knowing we would, our schedule would be pretty booked. Um, but normally we would have been able to spend a couple of days, um, have a lunch, have a dinner, you know, just get to meet a few folks. Um, and so that was a little different, but we've had uh, a good amount of people, uh, you know, reach out, welcome us in through Facebook, through email, and, and in those communications. But uh, talking with the leadership, we're working on a plan to put together small groups that, uh, uh, you know, putting, the, putting groups of, of 10 or so together to come and just sit uh, and have a small group time with me. And not where I'm preaching and teaching, but just, hey, come yeah. sit with the family and let's, let's let's meet, right? Um, and fortunately, the house that we bought has a couple of porches. It's got a, a porch in the front, a really good porch in the back that you don't have to go through the house to get to. And, uh, you know, maybe we can utilize that a little bit to, hey, come sit in our backyard for a couple hours and let's just get to know each other uh, for the first handful of weeks and then let's go from there. And so, uh, yeah, just working on that, you know, uh, of course, coming and going, loading a truck and unloading a truck is is a uh, one way churches say say hello and say goodbye, uh, and and even in the midst of this year where you're trying to keep people safe and and socially distanced and and not uh, having a lot of contact, it makes it difficult. Uh, but you know, people are always going to show up to help out because that's just that's just who we are. Yeah. Well, and that was one thing I was like, you know, you and I had talked like, man, I want to come up. I'm going to come up. I'm going to come up. And like literally had it planned in my head how this would work mm -hmm. out. And then we've had such an uptake here in Oklahoma. I don't want to bring that to you. <laughs> and so, I appreciate like, that. Like I just, I told Ashley uh, last week, I said, we just can't, um, we can't go um, because, you know, with our uptakes and cases, uh, we just don't want to risk that on them. And we don't want to mm -hmm. bring it to Wyoming because what, you know, Wyoming has had not necessarily you know, some of the, the steadiness like we have in Oklahoma. Right. Uh, 
and and you know I, and I, I think that, that like that's it so i'm entering into my fourth year mm-hmm. and and it's in that fourth year i've been told that the magic happens <laughs> um and so now that i'm in my fourth year like i was actually going to do mm-hmm. another round of cottage meetings and like hey it's been four years what are some things we can improve on and so like now i'm having to rethink what that would look like um, and i was telling you even before we started this was going to be the year, um, you know, every appointment that we've been in, uh, that we've been in longer than a year, uh, we've been able to do a thing called Franks with the Franks. And it's when we invite the congregation in to see the parsonage and like have a cookout with hot dogs and like, it's a good old time to get together. And uh, we were going to do that this year. Of course, in a larger church, we have to do it differently. And like, mm-hmm. we literally have to shuffle people in and out, but we had a plan for that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that definitely is not going to happen this year. Uh, maybe in the fall, um, you know, I, I don't know. I'm I'm not holding my breath for that sort of stuff, but like I think in the midst of these transitions, like we are having to rethink them and how can we do it in a safe and healthy manner. Um, and right. uh, and I think there are ways that we can continue doing those things. Um, and and I want to encourage congregations that if you're receiving a new pastor or you're saying goodbye to a pastor, the more cards you can send, the more things you can do to let them know that you love them and you care for them and you wish them well, or you're looking forward to receiving them. Please do that. Like do that. Don't do the, when are we going to meet conversation? That is not Mm -hmm. a conversation to have um, for Mm -hmm. an incoming or outgoing pastor. Um, Trust your leadership that they're making the right decision for your congregation and your context. Um, that is not a question to overwhelm your pastor, whether they're leaving or coming in because they have so many other things to think about. And that I, I'll be honest with you in most pastors minds, that's the last thing on their list because they have to have their basic needs met. They have to be ready to come in and preach. And, and in a lot of cases they do like literally have to be ready to preach that first Sunday after a move. And, and that's hard in a normal time, I can't imagine what it would look like in a season of COVID when volunteerism will have Mm -hmm. to be down. Like, like, and so I want to encourage congregations. If you're listening to this, if you're a leader of a congregation, help your pastor in any way by saying, how can I help you? Whether they're leaving or are they going? Because they may need you to come, like, I mean, may need to come and clean some things, you know, while they're not there. Or like, like, please find a way to support your pastor just by saying, how can I help? And, and leave those other conversations for later because those will happen. I, I, I trust that those will happen, but overwhelming your clergy person incoming or outgoing with those questions, um, it's going to make them not want to be there um, in so many ways. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that's one of those things we need you to consider. I mean, if you're listening to this uh, as a person who's in a congregation that's receiving or saying goodbye to a new pastor, please like, take that to heart because it will make a difference in how the pastor, whether they're leaving the appointment or coming into the new appointment receives that congregation. And yes, we know you want to get together. We all do. Um, And we do too. However, we need to do the best to keep everybody safe and congregations, churches are the worst at spreading the disease. Mm -hmm. It's statistically proven. Um, and so we have to do the best for our congregations. And so please trust your pastor, trust your leadership and leave that question for a later time and just say, Hey, how can we help you? That is the best question you can give your incoming or outgoing pastor at this time. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's always the fun thing about moving, right? Is, uh, we, we gotta go learn, uh, we gotta go learn uh, and meet who you are. Uh, but also we got to learn the little nuances of the church and how you worship. And um, that's hard enough on a good year, <laughs> on a year where we can gather together. Right. Um, and, and so in a year like COVID um, yeah, let us, it, whether it, take this time as a church, just to take a breath. Um, it, that's a time of transition is always a good time for everyone that's involved to take a breath, take a step back and go, okay, uh, we can start fresh, we can start new, and uh, we'll hit the ground running. It's just going to be a different pace and in a different a different race, really, a different yeah. way. So, no, I, I think that's good. Um, I, I Like I said, a month ago, I was worried about all of my friends and colleagues who were moving. <laughs> and here we go. Uh, we load a truck on Monday, so, so it's going to be an adventure. 
course, you and I talk all the time. And so, you know, I definitely no. wish you the best um, <laughs> uh, in your new appointment. And, uh, and, and I know, um, I know your congregation that you're leaving, your congregations that you're leaving are grieving. And, and I pray for them as they uh, grieve and, and then receive, because it's a grieve mm-hmm. and receive. Uh, and so I pray for those congregations. I would encourage you to do that. If, if, if you're listening and, and your pastor's in that time, if your pastor's transitioning, either coming in or coming out, man, just bathe them in prayer. Um, that's like the best thing you can really do. And then, you know, the next step would be, how can I help you? Um, and if they don't know, or they don't respond immediately, please give them some time to think about it. Like it's, um, this is a whole different season. Like that was my fear. Like I have to admit, like that was my biggest fear of all time because like, I mean, I can't do this. Like, I'm not going to be able to, I, if we had to move, I don't know how that would work. And I was, you know, I, I had a laundry list of things. Like I just didn't think I could handle. Um, and so I'm glad at least right now, <laughs> I right. Don't know. Like, um, well, and that, and that's a good point too, of keep asking, um, yeah. because pastors, <laughs> anytime anybody moves into a new community, it's hard because you don't know anybody. Um, you may know a few people, but maybe not well. Um, and pastors are very, clergy tend to, clergy and clergy families tend to be very guarded people. Um, is that fair to say? I'd say uh, isolated just because of their resident that's a, alien. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they have to protect themselves right. um, for yeah, outside yeah. forces. Good. Right. Good, bad, right or wrong. Um, and if you ask us if we need something and we say, you know, we're good right now, keep asking. Because uh, we're probably not good right now. We need help. We need something, but we don't know how to ask. Uh, or we're, we're <laughs> whatever emotions are going through, if we can, we can do this, it'll be okay. We don't want to put anybody out. Um, you know, we don't want to put the burden on someone else. Uh, you know, we, we take a lot of, a lot of pride in that, a lot of, um, just we don't want to put any you know any extra burden on anyone else and so keep asking uh your pastors keep asking and that just goes throughout the whole ministry you have with your pastor uh if you notice something just keep asking and uh well and and i think that that's that's definitely the good spot like we're Mm -hmm. like i think especially right now with covid um please trust that your pastoral leadership teams are doing all that they can to provide a safe and healthy environment for, for you. Mm-hmm. And if you're not mm-hmm. on those teams and you're not part of those conversations, it's not that they're not listening to you. Right. But I think the healthier question is not when are we going back, but how can we help? Mm-hmm. Because I have ways that I can, I can deploy people that I mm-hmm. need help. I don't, you know, like, like I, I'm, I'm worn out by that con- that conversation mm-hmm. about when are we coming back? Mm-hmm. Um, especially with the uptake in Oklahoma, like, I mean, I had an idea and now it's, you know, I'm having to rethink it. We're right. having to pivot. And so understand that your churches are pivoting um, and continually pivoting. And, and if they're, if you feel like they're not doing anything, um, then that's a good time to have a good conversation. Just say, Hey, pastor, what are we doing as a yeah, church? Going on? Mm-hmm. Um, and I, that's a different question than when are we coming back? Very because I have so. to be honest with you as a person who's now, you know, we were one of the first churches to, shut down um you know so we've time and i've been in the longest um i'm done with that conversation and i want to have the conversation of how can we be the church outside of what we're what what we known as the norm how can we move into a new normal right um and and that's i've done disaster relief most of my career and i feel like that now we need to start moving into the new normal and realizing that some of that old isn't coming back Mm-hmm. and may not come back for a long time and that's going to have to be we're going to have to understand that and uh mm-hmm. and and understand your, I, I do believe that all churches are doing the best they can with the understanding and knowledge that they have mm-hmm. um and and that what most people can do is just simply how can i help mm-hmm. um and and if you do that it will take a lot of stress off your pastor's plate um, cause I know right now, um, looking at a lot of clergy colleagues, whether they're moving or not, or man, we're, we're beat to death. Um, we're working more hours. We're doing more things that we weren't doing before. Um, we're having to new learn, learn new things that we didn't know before and we are beat. And so please like find ways that you can take care of your, your, uh, your church staff, whether the clergy or lay, um, I think right now we need it more than ever because we're in that, like, 
you know, a lot of us have been in this for three plus months. And so like, we need all the outside help we can get. Um, even if it's as simple as saying, Hey man, here's, you know, go use this to go get some coffee, you know, or, you know, whatever. I think that those are things that we need to do for incoming or, you know, and, um, so as we wrap, Zach, do you have anything else to share before we close today? No, I don't think so. Um, just, uh, yeah, continue loving on your pastors coming and going and uh it'll be it'll be okay yes it will be <laughs> i keep telling people that it'll be okay so if you're needing some items uh for your pastor coming or going feel free to <laughs> feel free to check out our website we've got some really good stuff to receive and and um you know especially if they're a bearded pastor what a better way to recommend a bearded pastor than giving them a bearded theologians t-shirt um we but spent you can, 30 minutes so we could have a shameless plug at the end of this to buy your pastor a gift. Yeah, <laughs> yes, which we make like 30 cents on that we turn around and buy uh, other things. Like, that's too um, but, you know, like, you know, it's a good way to take care of your pastor. Um, and uh, with Father's Day as well on, on Sunday, um, you know, I don't know if you can get it from Zazzle that quickly, but um, good luck. Or just give your dad a picture of what it is. I've done that before with people. I'm like, yeah. hey, here's what it is. It's just not here yet. Um and so, you know, just check us out. We've got a lot of good content. Um, we um, we always have, um, you know, and so just check us out at beardedtheologians.com. And so for the Bearded Theologians, I'm Matt Franks. I'm Zach Bechtold. Thanks for checking us out. First, guys, I want you to subscribe and like this video. And put that thumbs, push that thumbs up. Thank you for listening to the Bearded Theologians podcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share on all social media outlets. You can check out old episodes and more information at beardedtheologians.com. Thanks for checking us out.